we've overcome But I'm gonna wave my, wave my flag Count all the reasons, we are the champions There ain't no turning, turning back Saying, oh, can't you taste the feeling, feeling Saying, oh, we all together singing Look how far we've dropped now, 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 now There's beauty in our liberty we found What's up, everybody, and welcome back to MLS Rundown, edition number two. That's right. You probably thought that I was done, that you hadn't seen a video for a couple days, so you're probably like, this guy is probably not doing this thing anymore, and we can unsubscribe. Well, you were wrong, because I'm back, and we've got some news to talk about. We are just, not this weekend, but the following weekend, we're just under two weeks away from MLS action. A little over, I should say that, a little over a week away from MLS action. But the action doesn't start next weekend. It starts tonight. That's right. The CONCACAF Champions League starts tonight on Fox Sports 2 and Fox Soccer Plus. Both games happen at 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, Atlanta is being hosted by Matagua. I, I'm not saying that club correctly. I know I'm not. And that's on Fox Soccer Plus. And then also at 10 o'clock on FS2, the game that I'll be watching. I'll kind of be paying attention to both of them. But on FS2 tonight, Leon is hosting LAFC. This should be a good game. We all know how CONCACAF Champions League goes. MLS teams don't usually fare too well in the CONCACAF Champions League. Is this the year that, I mean, a team makes a run and actually wins the entire thing? I'm not feeling too confident about it. Um, I, f I feel good about Seattle. They've got a, I don't want to say easy, they've got a pretty decent pathway leading them to the final if they do everything right and check all the boxes. LAFC just got rid of Walker Zimmerman. Not feeling too good about that. They've got a new goalkeeper. I'm interested to see how he does. Montreal doesn't have a team at all. I mean, they're probably going to be bottom of the East this year, so... Not holding hopes up for them. I mean, Atlanta, Atlanta, I would feel confident about, but Miles Robinson just went down with injury and they're dealing with new players as well. New York City FC, uh, they lost their coach. They have a new manager behind the bench. So who knows what they're going to come out and do? I'm looking forward to it. I think Atlanta actually wins tonight, and I have a feeling LAFC loses to Lyon. So let's see what happens tonight. In other news, yet kind of somber news, and this news is really not the best to be reporting about, I'm going to read straight from MLSsoccer.com so I don't get any details wrong for you guys. FC Cincinnati announced that head coach Ron Yans resigned from his position in the wake of an investigation surrounding a complaint made by the MLS Players Association accusing Yans of making extremely inappropriate comments. He said the N-word while singing along to a song. The N-word was part of the song. He sang it. Uh, one of the players, or a few of the players, complained, and this was brought up to management. The player that complained, I hear, is <clears throat> Darren Maddox. Jan stepped away from his coaching duties on Friday as the investigation began and formally resigned three days later. He leaves the club after joining FC Cincinnati on August 4th of 2019. I hate to see this happen. I can't, I don't want to go into it much because I am not of that race and I have no room to talk about how someone would feel if they heard that word. All I'm saying is it sucks. He didn't say it in an agitated way. He didn't say it directly to someone. He was just singing along to a song. And it sucks that this man lost his job because someone felt sensitive about it. This is tough for FC Cincinnati because this they're back to their interim 
uh, manager, uh, Johan Dame, or Dame from France, um, while GM Ger Gerard Ninkamp begins the international search for a new coach. They've already had three coaches and or three managers. Um, sorry, I'm used to American sports. We call them uh, coaches. They've already had three managers, and they've been in the league for one year. Uh, this is a club dealing with a lot of um, drama right now with Darren Maddox, who is, according to sources, the player who reported the incident. He's dealing with felonies, multiple felonies in New England. <clears throat> he is more than likely not going to be on the team. So this is a club that just has to figure themselves out. It's tough, too. My friend's an FC Cincinnati fan, and he said that a lot of the players they brought in Sorry, my I've got like <laughs> my throat is not working with me. Um, a lot of the players they brought in are from the Netherlands and are Dutch. And he says he's seen reports that some of the players don't want to play there anymore because they came to literally play for Ron Jan. So it's a tough situation. I think it's going to be another tough season for FC Cincinnati. I don't. I have them currently, and I'll give you guys <clears throat> later next week, probably on Friday, the day before the season starts. I'll give you my official MLS predictions, um, but I don't have them getting much higher than 11th or 10th. All right, a little more happy news. Miami, you've got your guy, and by you've got your guy, I mean you've actually got your fifth option. Um, I don't think this was the guy they intended to bring in, but Rodolfo Pizarro is a member of Miami, Inter Miami, as I should say. Uh, with Rodolfo Pizarro, Pizarro now officially a member of Inter Miami CF, the expansion club's new signing revealed some of the motivating factors behind his move to MLS. Talk to uh, Tata Martino, remember him, former manager of Atlanta United, now managing the Mexican national team. He talked to him about joining MLS, and Tata Martino said MLS is at the same level of Le Liga MX. I guess we will see how much of the same level they are in tonight's CCL action, but I would like to also agree that I feel like MLS has caught up to Liga MX. You have a lot of stars. Alan Paledo, um, like, like I just said, Rodolfo Pizarro, Lucas Zeller, and a lot of stars heading over from Liga MX to MLS. Brighter pastures, I think. I think the play is more enjoyable. I think the fan bases are a little better, uh, just my opinion. This is a good signing for Inter Miami, but I don't think it's the signing that they wanted. They wanted a Cavani or a uh, name. Oh, <laughs> they wanted a Cavani or a Messi or a Ronaldo and it just a Luis Suarez and it, it's just not happening. They're still rumored to get David Silva in the summer after he finished the Premier League season. But I think this is their fifth option. They looked at it as, we're going into our inaugural season. We don't have a star that's going to sell tickets. We have a lot of decent players, but no one that's going to sell tickets and put butts in seats. And I think that's what this move uh, was all about, is getting someone that can uh, bring in a crowd, to say the least. Just a couple other things I want to say to you guys before I end this episode. Um... One of them is Paul Ariola. This sucks. He came out and said Saturday he tore his ACL, which means he will be out for a lot of the MLS season. Now, soccer works completely different timeline, injury timelines than any other sports, football, basketball. Football and basketball, baseball, you would be missing the entire year. You would be out for the season. Soccer, I remember last year, Ramon Allison Drini, I think, did a similar thing. I don't, don't remember if it was the ACL or not, but he tore something that usually would take you out for the season. And he was back for the last five games of the year. I think I think this is going to be the same with Paul Ariola. I was wrong about my assessment at first. I said he's probably going to be back in August. I think he's going to be back last five, you know, ten games of the season. I guess that kind of puts you at August. Um, and going into the playoffs. But this is a huge loss for D.C. They do have Ederson Flores, who he could slide in there, but he'll probably be monitoring the midfield. I'm interested to see what he can do. So a little bit of news there. A um, couple transfer news. Whitecaps are chasing South Korean international. Lee Wynn, who's on Miami, 
now might be on the move already. He might never play a game for that club. Um, reports link in a Miami man to Vietnam. He is he does have dual citizenship with Vietnam and the United States. Um, there's one more I wanted to say. FC Cincinnati closing in on deal for Ajax attacking midfielder. Don't know if that's going to go down since they lost their manager. And the last thing I want to say today, last news I've got for you, Philadelphia Union have finally found a name for their stadium, or at least a new name. It is now going to be named Subaru Park as part of a multi-year partnership. So that's kind of cool. I can't remember exactly what it was named before. I thought it was just Union Park or something like that. Um, but yeah, now they got a sponsor, and now it's Welcome to Subaru Park, as you can see on their Twitter photo. So thank you guys so much for joining me today for another MLS Rundown. If you like this video, enjoyed the news that I shared with you, or enjoyed my thoughts about the news, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about some of these subjects. Do you believe Ron Yan should have stepped away, or do you think the club should have handled this in a totally different way? And don't forget to turn on that notification to check out whenever I post a new video because I'm on no schedule. I do these things for fun, so I will post uh, whenever I get time to. As always, I love you guys. Peace out.